Okay, I was asked uh, a question on what, what are my views on death. These are my views on, <clears throat> on death. So, hmm, yeah, so as I've said many times, um, my, my fear of, I mean, I don't, I don't know if I actually have fear of death. I, I mean, I don't like the idea of suffering and pain, but the idea that I can die uh, has totally gone. <clears throat> and uh, that happened, uh, as I've said many times before, when I met my teacher of enlightenment, enlightenment Muji. And he asked me what I was beyond my thoughts, and I had a white light spiritual experience, which was more powerful than anything I'd ever experienced in this world. It was like the level of light and power and love was indescribable. And I knew it to be, um, for me, I took it to be the light of God. Something where this world is like living in a world of shadows compared to that experience. So that nature, the nature of that was infinite undying, eternal, um, there was no this or that, there was no me, there was no world, there was just infinite light and power. It's like bliss beyond bliss, forever, and no, no, non-ending. So, so, <clears throat> the, so it seems, you know, so it's kind of obvious as I came out of that experience that the more I identified with my thoughts in this world, the more the existence of the idea of something that was temporary and that could die started to exist. Oh, you know, it seemed like I suddenly became, I was a body. Or it seemed like, oh, and then if you're a body, bodies eventually die. So it means that I am, if I am the body, then I will die, because I am the body. Uh, or if I am my thoughts, then my thinking could die. You know, if I thought I was my thoughts or the or the identity that had been created, if I thought that was me, then that could die. So I then realized that actually the only things that can die are the things that are not me. You know, the, the actual essence of who I am can never die. But the things I identify with and think that I really am, I could have fear of those things dying, <clears throat> but those are not me. So that's the, um, that's the thing. So no, de death, I, you know, I know that I cannot die. It's not that, but I'm identified with this body. I mean, I don't like the idea of if someone was to try and cut my leg off, I wouldn't actually enjoy it, be up for that that much. But, uh, or someone who was to hit me with a hammer, you know, uh, wouldn't actually volunteer for that. But um, once the body is gone, is the nature of what I can die? And is that nature undiable? And is that me? Yes, I am undiable. You know, I'm not, I'm actually the Course in Miracles is quite good. I encourage the Course in Miracles. It says, one of the lessons is I'm not a body, I'm free, for I'm as God created me. So, so two of my favorite lessons in the Course in Miracles, I, I'm not a body, I'm free. So if I'm not this body, what's observing the body? Well, there's the, the observer, the, the infinite stillness beyond the body is undiable. If I hook into the body, believe I am the body, then I start to feel that I can die. Or what about my thoughts? If I'm the observer of my thoughts, then, you know, even then that cannot die. If I believe I'm my thoughts and my personality, then there can be fear. I can be off in the future or believe I'm the body, all kinds of things. So that's the thing with death. So I know it's... Uh, <clears throat> if, I, if I get hypnotized to believe I'm my thinking and my body, of course, then I'll have real fear of death because I will be divorced from the experience of my undiable nature. Now here's the thing, so I can, I can share that from experience, but what's my view of things like heaven and hell and the afterlife? And now I haven't had these experiences, but I, you could say these are my beliefs that I, I agree with, uh, with certain spiritual teachers. I, I, I definitely agree with, um, with, uh, with Buddha in the sense of... Um, Reincarnation is a, is a view I, I subscribe to, reincarnation. But, um, but even reincarnation is not real. But it is, like, it's as real as this body. But it's like, would they talk about these things of out-of-body experiences, which I haven't heard, but I, I believe is true. Um, people can be, like, in the operate, they can be a, the observer 
at the top of the ceiling watching the operation happening. And there's been lots of reported cases of this. And then they'll, they'll, they'll come at, you know, the general anaesthetic will wear off and then they'll say, look, I was, at the top, I was on the ceiling watching the whole operation and I saw that you were doing this, you were cutting the stomach open. And they go, and that they had just flipped out of their, their spiritual body, had just flipped out of their physical body and watched the whole thing. And then went back into the body and reported exactly what happened. There's numerous re- reports of that. I'm a hypnotherapist and there's lots of reports of past life regression where people can, can give evidence of things which they can track. So, but all of that... Now, so for me, it just then gives some, you know, out of... It can give things like, you know, this, you know, this body... The spirit is docked into the body, but the spirit can leave the body. You know, it, it could go off into the light, you know, but if the spirit leaves the body, it can enter, you know, there's the idea of heavens and hells. These are the realms that the spirit can go to when out of the body. And for me, the heavenly realms is, is essentially, as I sort of see it, you know, like, um, I mean, I, I think, uh, you know, if you've... Um, if you've done a lot of spiritual work, um, then and you're practicing unconditional love, it's like your your spirit has a vibration. So when it leaves the body, it tends to go to a vibration in the spirit realm, which is an equivalent to what what it had achieved at the end of its life, if that makes sense. So, let's say at the end of life, I've I've learned to love my neighbor, myself, to forgive everyone to try and be loving, to being of service to everyone, and my spirit now leaves the physical body, is going to be attracted to a realm of spirit which is at a similar vibration. Let's say if I was spending my whole life killing and mugging and murdering and stealing and just being malicious my whole life, at the end of my life, my spirit will have a vibration, you know, I'm quite mean, I'm quite horrible, I'm quite violent. And then as the spirit leaves the physicality, it tends to be attracted to a a vibratory realm, you could call it a hellish realm, which is an equivalent to my vibration. So these are different realms which are in accordance. It's like my spirit floats to the equivalent vibration uh, that I've gone. So you could say, no, my my spirit is ended up in a heavenly realm or a hellish realm, and there's lots of realms in between. Or I could be enlightened beyond all realms, beyond even a spirit in a realm, just off into the light. So that, for me, would be off into enlightenment. So, so that's my, my view. Also, you know, it could be that I'll leave the, the body and come back into another body to have another go, so that uh, I can have another go at trying to grow and get to a better realm. So that's essentially how I see death. How, how do I personally relate to death? Well, you know, like my parents are quite elderly uh, right now. So for me, it's like, if I'm in the non-dual state, if I'm in the observer, it's like, I know my nature, and I know the truth of their nature and truth. So there's no fear. If I go off into like, I'm in my body, and then I project, then I'll immediately project that they're in their bodies. And then I'll connect on, they must be suffering in their bodies and I'll feel sorry for them and everything. So everything, how I relate to death when I'm around my parents just relates to what level of consciousness I'm in at the moment. Sometimes I'll go in and I'm in, I'm in this kind of bliss state. And I'll just be happy to see them, and it'll be lovely. There'll be no thought of death or suffering, there'll just be joy. Or if I'm more identified with my body, then I'll project they must be suffering, they'll be dead soon. So my whole experiencing the situation depends on where I'm at in my level of consciousness as to what I experience. So sometimes I just want to have fun with them, to talk to them, to ask them what's going on. And then sometimes I'll be more identified with my thinking, go, oh, they must be suffering, oh, they'll not be here very soon, and I have a more, more of a, a miserable experience of it. And I actually think that being in the higher vibration is of better use to me and them than to be in this, oh my God, they're going to be dead soon. Oh my God, you must be suffering. I'm feeling miserable. Let me talk about your stuff. So that's how I sort of see it.